Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought I'd do something slightly different today. Um, I'm going to show you five of my go-to movies. Um, you know how it is, uh, you're searching through your nine million satellite channels, there's absolutely sod all on. Um, so you disappear off to your DVD or Blu-ray shelf and try to find something that you know you're going to enjoy. That's what I put together today, um, just five of my go-to movies that I've seen a thousand times before. I know I'm going to enjoy them, and if there's nothing on, I will pop one of them on. Starting with this one, Duel. Um, it was a fairly well-known movie in the 70s. It was Spielberg's first ever um, directing job. Um, it's basically the story of a travelling salesman played by Dennis Weaver, who went on to become the Cloud later on in the 70s um, and he's basically menaced by a 40 ton truck on a remote desert highway it's just a brilliant exercise in, in, in suspense it, it is it's roughly 90 minutes of him playing cat and mouse with this with this truck you do not see the driver all you see is possibly his arm sticking out the window so you've no idea who this guy is all you know that he is absolutely batshit crazy so um, that is definitely worth a watch if you've never seen it before it's probably one of the finest suspense films from the 70s so I'd definitely recommend that one second Close Encounters of the Third Kind I mean this is easily my favourite movie of all time um, sorry if it's glaring a bit this is actually the steelbook version um, it's the only steelbook I've got and I've not taken the uh, the cellophane off it yet I'm quite proud of this one <laughs> But this was, um, to me, this was Spielberg's masterpiece. I know Schindler's List is considered by many to be his, his absolute masterpiece, but to me, this, this was my favourite of them all. Um, it's the story of a guy who sees a UFO and his journey through the film takes him to basically first contact with aliens. It is beautifully done. The special effects are excellent. It was released in 77. Um, saw it at Burt and Odeon. Um, the first time I saw it I didn't properly get it but something drew me to go and watch it again and in the three weeks it was at Burton Odeon I saw it it was about 16 or 17 times absolutely couldn't get enough of it um, on the back of watching that I actually bought a telescope <laughs> and started I installed it in my dad's shed and used to spend hours just sitting in there just looking up at the skies the tagline for the movie I believe was watch the skies and that's exactly what I did um, but that is a movie I never get bored of I've seen it hundreds of times and I will no doubt see it a hundred more times um, in my lifetime third Saturday Night Fever you all pretty much know this one um, it's a raw quite dark um, <laughs> It's a disco movie, but it's, it's not quite what you would think it is. John Travolta plays Tony Monero, um, who is a paint shop worker during the day and the king of the disco at night. He lives in Brooklyn. Um, it is, it's roughly the story of him, his mates, who are not exactly very nice people. To be fair, John Travolta's character isn't a very nice person either. Um, but the the music in it is just brilliant. It's all Bee Gees tracks. Um, you've also got Yvonne Elliman, uh, The Tramps. The soundtrack is just absolutely superb. Um, I bought the double LP. Remember LPs? Bought the double LP. I've still got it, and I've also got the soundtrack on um, CD. This this is by far one of my favourite movies. Again, I've seen this hundreds of times. I probably know the script off by heart by now, uh, but I never get bored of watching it. Um, I'm sure it probably looks a little bit dated now, um, but back then th this was this was raw stuff. It was controversial stuff. Um, it was an ex certificate. Uh, I actually did um, an article on the website if you want to pop over and have a look. It's not so much a review of the movie because that's pretty much been done to death. Um, it's more my memories of actually getting to see this movie because with it being an ex-certificate and coming out in 1977 I was only 15 years old I only looked about 10 so there was no way I was going to get into the cinema to see this um, but I eventually did get to see it probably three four years later and that, that article is basically my story of how I actually eventually got to see that wonderful film next um, we've got Taxi Driver starring Robert De Niro directed by Martin Scorsese 
um, also set in New York. Uh, looking at these movies, New York was not a great place to be in the 70s. There, there was something fascinating about it to me. I always wanted to see New York, but I always wanted to see the New York of Taxi Driver, of Rhoda, um, that was a comedy series of the 70s, um, all that kind of thing. Um, this is a nightmarish tale. Um, Robert De Niro stars as a guy called Travis Bickle, um, an ex-Vietnam vet who's becoming increasingly disillusioned with the state of New York, as in the crime, the prostitution, and he decides to take matters into his own hands. Um, the final 15 minutes is incredibly difficult to watch. Um, it was released in 76, and I don't think we'd seen that level of violence on screen before. Um, it was also an early starring role for Judy Foster, who played a 12-year-old prostitute. So it, it was a very controversial movie um, at the time, and I believe it had quite a bit of problems with the censors, um, both in America and in Britain. So that's, that's one I would highly recommend. I'd never get bored of that. Another bleak vision of New York, The Warriors. Whew. I mean, a lot, most people have seen this, so you, you will know about this one. Um, again, New York not coming off very well in this. I mean, the early part of the 70s, you had movies like The Panic in Needle Park, which was about heroin addiction in New York. A little bit later in the decade, you get movies like Death Wish, um, which is basically uh, Charles Bronson playing Paul Kersey, who again gets sick to death of the violence his family um, is a victim of it and he decides to go on the vigilante trail you've then got taxi driver which is a very very similar story and now you've got the warriors so basically they say new york is not a very nice place to live in <laughs> and as far as the warriors goes now the gangs have taken over um, this is an excellent film it's 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 more an action film the gangs, if you've seen this, you'll know they are colourful, they're brilliant. Um, the story is superb. Um, the warriors attend, if I remember right, some kind of a meeting in the park. And the leader of the meeting is killed, which makes every gang in New York want to kill these guys. And it's their journey back to Coney Island, uh, which is their stomping ground and having to get through all of these gangs on the way. I'm probably not explaining it very well, but I don't think I have to because most of you will have seen this and I'm constantly surprised at how many young people have actually seen that um, and recognize it and love it. So that that's another one. And I think that's it, that's, that's sort of top five go-to movies. I could, I could do another list at some point. Uh, the only ones I've had through this week, I'm, I'm trying to slow down on the Blu-rays because I'm running out of room. I've had this one, Madman, um, an early 80s slasher flick. I've not seen it for quite a few years. Now, this is an Arrow release, so it's actually, it's really packed with special features, documentaries. Um, you've got the DVD and the Blu-ray included with this. So I'm looking forward to watching that one at some point. Um, next week, I'll do a proper review of this, Hell Drivers. I watched this last night. Wow, what a movie. Um, I'll do a proper review of that. I'm also going to write something up for the website on this one. This is a very, very special film. If you've not seen this, grab this by all means because it is absolutely superb. But I'll do a proper review on that next week. I think that's pretty much it for this week. Um, I don't think there's anything else. There was one thing um, I was probably a little bit unfair on um, a TV show that I reviewed last week, which was um, The Haunting of Hill House. Mm. It wasn't really my cup of tea. Um, I was probably a little bit rough on it, I don't know. I don't like things that don't make sense, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I expected going into it for it to be a, a straightforward haunted house movie. And it was to a certain extent, but it was so slow in getting where it was supposed to get. There were ten episodes. Um, and at the end of the last one, I expected the last episode to be a real barnstormer, and it, it really, really wasn't. And I, I came away from it just scratching my head. I don't like to work too hard for scares nowadays. Um, I'm from a generation where we, we grew up in the 80s with slasher flicks like um, Dressed to Kill, Friday the 13th, 
um, Halloween, Humanoids from the Deep, just just straightforward movies, and they were just scary as hell. But you didn't have to think too much. Horror movies nowadays are a different. They seem to be a different breed. They're very very deep. I watched one a few months ago called Get Out. Um, absolutely made no sense to me at all. I I did not understand the ending. I'm not sure I understood pretty much all of it. So, I mean, if anybody's got any idea what the hell Get Out was all about, please tell me. Um, I keep hearing rumours about a movie called Us by the same director, but I'm a little bit reluctant to get into that one. <laughs> so maybe you can convince me differently on that one. And also, I had a little bit of a compliment paid to me this week. Um, one of the younger guys that works uh, where I do, um, I was chatting with him, and he said in a nutshell that he didn't know a lot of the films that I talk about because obviously he wasn't around when a lot of them were released but he likes hearing me talk about them and I, I actually take that as the ultimate compliment so cheers for that Sam it, it sort of makes it worth it um, and if I can inspire people like him to watch movies that they've never heard of never seen um, then my job is done um, so you know, if I can get you interested in movies like A Clockwork Orange, uh, Straw Dogs, The Devils, uh, there are hundreds that you won't have seen that I'm fairly sure that you guys will enjoy. Um, so I'll uh, I'll be working on you with that one, Sam. I'm going to be uh, shoving some really weird films at you. <laughs> take my word for it, they are classics. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, take care, everybody. Uh, it looks as if we're going to be coming out of this lockdown within the next few weeks, well, few months. So fingers crossed we can all get back to normal. Um, but until then, stay safe. Um, and I will be with you again sometime next week. Uh, take care, everybody, and have a good, have a good day. Take care. Bye.